Have you heard the tragic story about the first ever gay elf footballer? I should be judged on my football inability and anything else because you know, if you're heterosexual, doesn't mean to say that you're gonna jump on every woman you see just in fashion. Who made history when he became the first black professional footballer to be bought for one million pounds when he signed for Nine Gun Forest in 1981. Justin struggled to live up to the price, tag, which led to a fallout with his manager due to poor performances on the pitch. At the same time, in 1982, a media storm was brewing around Justin regarding sexuality as reports of him attending gay bars and nightclubs in Nottingham started to circulate. However, his story became much bigger than just football. In the 1990s, gay people were subjected to relentless persecution by mainstream media, something the executive director of AIDS Map, Matthew Hodson, spoke about with Pink News, The Sun. Like really virulently homophobic at the time, they were very much behind Section 28 and all of that homophobic legislation at the time, and so our communities were really besieged by this, this kind of double attack on the one side of was this incredibly homophobic environment and on the other side there was this disease which was killing us. Matthew also highlighted his brief encounter with Justin before he came out. I first met Justin in a London bar called The London Apprentice, and I knew nothing about him as a footballer. He spent the night together, we breakfast together the next morning and, and we stayed vague in touch. On top of the pressure from the media, Justin suffered from a knee injury, which halted his career with battles of injuries. Justin's career started to spiral going from club to club. That was until Justin agreed to an around 70 to 80,000 pound deal with the British tabloid newspaper, The Sun, to share his story and reveal his homosexuality. Becoming the first ever professional male footballer to come out as gay while still playing was another historic moment in Justin's. Before the story went public, he told his brother John, to which John responded, I've got that. So let me give it. If it'll mean you won't do the story, let me give you the money. Despite efforts from John to cover up this story, it was front page news. The next day you would pay money to get that LGBTQ plus person to conceal their sexuality or their gender identity so that it doesn't bring shame upon you. It feels like this is something which we should have left behind in the Victorian era, and it, it's desperately sad. All the publicity and media harassment that followed Justin was too much. He decided to relocate, move into America. In 1995, Justin turned to coaching. Whilst out there, the former footballer was accused of sexual assault on a 17-year-old boy in 1998. During questioning, Justin fled back to the UK. This is where he received a warrant for his. Justin then went on to write his final letter before sadly taking his own life in a garage. Moments after visiting the Chariot's Roman Spa, a local gay sauna, Justin wrote in his final letter that he denied the charges, but feared that due to his homosexuality he would not receive a fair trial. The cons, unwanted attention from the purr and the broken-down relationships equated to just in fashion news. Shocking passing. That's only 37 years of. In 2020, Justin Fashion was inducted into the National Football Museum's Hall of Fame. This award was presented to Justin's knee, Mao founder of the Justin Fashion Foundation, who helps battle homophobia and racism within football. Nor HFC, LGBTQ plus fan group, Proud Canaries are raising funds to pay for a sculpture to be created in honor of the gay footballing legend. We've got to tackle the homophobia in. We've got to for the sake of Justin, for the sake of the future, Justin. So for the sake of that young gay kid who's been told that sport isn't for him, we've got to tackle it. Why do you think so few gay footballers feel safe to come out?